Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories. And today's topic is. What's your worst story from the throw him in the pool, he'll learn how to swim parenting style. I had never gone camping before I was 11, I really wanted to go with my 10 year old cousin. My parents took me to the woods, and handed us the tent and a half full bag of ranch Doritos, and like a pack of Broutwursts, and my 7 year old sister. Then they pulled off, leaving us to camp for the first time alone in the woods with a 7 year old. Not a fun weekend. I never went camping again, but it was apparently fine because that's how my dad and uncle learned. I'm just grateful for the lack of serial killers, and black bears. I got pregnant at 13, mom allowed her new hubby to take me for the abortion then he beat my ass when I got home from the procedure. She never asked, who, what, how. I'd been molested since I was four fifths and somewhere in my stupid brain I guess I thought that sex was love. When I got pregnant again at 14, I was made to keep the baby to teach me a lesson. Again, no one asked. No one tried to educate me. Finally, at 25, my mom pissed me off with her cluelessness and in a fit of rage, I blurted examples of all the years of sexual abuse I endured and she said. All these years, I thought Robert had been messing with you and that was the reason you were acting out. You guys, when I tell you that my head exploded at the same time all of the air left my body. I was stunned. She thought her now ex-husband had been molesting me, impregnated me not once, but twice, yet you never asked me. For clarity, it was never my stepdad. Your desire to be married to a serial cheater was far more important than my total health. She divorced him when I was 23, because she finally caught him with his best friend's wife. That was simply too much for her to handle. This explains why she shipped my daughter and I off to my grandparents, three months after her birth. My mom has always had an unnaturally close relationship with my oldest daughter, this conversation revealed why, for 12 years, my mom thought my daughter was fathered by her husband. Anyway, I finally learned about sex education slash birth control from my 11th grade PE teacher, she saw my miserable self and did her best to mother and educate me at every opportunity. My dad was notorious for the rub dirt on it method when I got hurt as a kid. When I was 9 I was in a nasty motorcycle accident out in the desert. I broke and misplaced my fibula, the bone was protruding from my leg. My dad didn't want to end his desert trip early so he told me not to look at it and to keep trying to walk. I was in so much pain anytime I would move I would black out. My brother was so concerned he urged my dad that we should go home. My dad finally gave in but was so drunk he let my 11 year old brother at the time drive us out of the desert he was so nervous he hit so many bumps and each bump I would black out then come to. Once we got home he thought it would be best to sleep it off before going to the hospital. The next day I was admitted to the hospital and my dad was taken into custody by CPS. My dad, when he decided to give me driving lessons when I was a teenager, which turned out to be a driving lesson, singular. He took me to the parking lot across the street from our house, and had me tool around to get used to the steering and pedals for about 15 minutes. Then, annoyed that I wasn't catching on fast enough for his taste, he decided we should go on the actual road and I'd learn faster in a more challenging environment. Cue him barking orders to speed up, slow down, hit the brakes, in an increasingly frustrated voice as I tooled along, terrified I was going to hit someone. The culmination of our lesson came when he noticed we were low on gas, and told me to pull into the gas station. Keep in mind my sum total of driving experience at this point was about 25 minutes. Which did not include parallel parking. I pulled into the gas station and came at the pump at something like a 30 degree angle. He grabbed the steering wheel to correct and actually yelled at me. Jesus Christ. Don't you know how to drive? To which I said, no. I don't. You're teaching me, remember. He drove back home silently. That was the end of dad's driving lessons. 
I signed up with a driving school after that. Cliff jumping, 20 feet up a girl's dad pushed her but she hesitated and tried to stay up there but slipped. Landed on her back in a boulder from 15 feet then the water. You probably just killed her then I jumped in to do a rescue. Luckily our lifeguard group was there doing practice rescues and even had the board. How she only survived with just bruises is a miracle. Search and rescue pulled her out the rest of the way. Not my story, but my mom's. She developed a phobia after she was thrown into a pool to learn how to swim. At the age of 70, she still doesn't know how to. She's terrified of being on the water, even in a safety vest. And then, some fake clairvoyant told her she would die by drowning. So we spent our summers in the mountains as far away from being on water. I was scared of the deep end so my dad threw me in. My cousin parked an inflatable mattress in the corner I was in immediately. My parents supposedly yelled at him to move, he didn't. I don't know how long I was was under the mattress for, but I was spitting up water slash choking when I came back up. I was maybe six at the time. Ignore them, bullies, and don't show a reaction, when they're bored they'll stop. Completely false. And you wonder why I hate going to school so much, mother. It's not a wonder that when I went to secondary school, I made a motto of don't stand for anyone's bullshit. I went through too much of this shit for anyone else to do the same. Ironically enough, there are studies that state that the trauma childhood bullying goes for the rest of one's life, so I'm pretty much set. When I got my very first period, then my family made a trip to the pool the next day. My mom shrugged it off and told me you don't bleed when when you're swimming and never said another word about it. Spent the entire time taking trips to the bathroom. My younger cousin, four at the time, was a climber and always needed help getting down. His dad told his mom to leave him. He'll either learn how to get down himself or stop climbing. Cousin ended up climbing onto the roof, fell off and got impaled on a fence pole. One very expensive trip to the ER and he now has a cool scar on his thigh. My father-in-law decided when his first child was born that they, he and his wife, would not go to the baby when he started crying in the middle of the night, in order to teach him that crying doesn't get you anything in this world. Turns out, newborns need to be fed every two hours. So it's a good thing my mother-in-law ignored him and went to their newborn son, otherwise he might have died. Hurt my arm playing football during morning break at school, was sent home by the school nurse. My dad said it was fine. Bandaged it and sent me to school the next day only for them to send me home again within an hour. My mum made my dad take me to hospital and my arm was broken. My wrist had spilled lengthways, it was in casts for nine months. I was secretly buzzing to be honest because, well, that showed him the knob. I was volunteering at a parent-child zoo day, and saw a few parents like this. The zoo had some free-roaming peacocks, and it was awful how many parents just didn't tell their too young to know kids that they can be mean. So the little toddler goes, wow, pretty bird and tries to get a closer look, only to get chased and attacked by this thing while the parents watch. Most of them said something like you should have known better, like, how if you never teach them? The child can barely walk. You expect them to remember that some animals have a strong territorial sense. And then your baby gets terrorized by this thing that's bigger than them and looks like an alien for all they know, and you don't even give them a hug. See also, that one mom we had to kick out of the zoo because she was encouraging her kids to antagonize the llama in the hopes it would spit on them. Yikes, people, have some empathy for tiny humans who trust you implicitly with their well-being. When I was about 5 or 6, I was very sick with the flu. Fever, vomiting, sweating, congestion, it was awful. There was some mix-up at the pharmacy, and they thought I was my father and gave him adult medication basically these giant horse pills. Now, normal child medication for things like this are syrups and chewable shit for obvious reasons. 
My dad comes home and tells me I have to take these meds. I have a hard time getting them down, almost choking a few times. My dad got frustrated and literally started shoving these huge pills down my sore throat with his angrily shaking fingers. I started crying, my nose was stuffed so I could only breathe through my mouth. I remember my dad's wedding ring banging against my teeth, eyes watering, gasping for air while looking at my mom for help. Eventually I coughed it back up, crying and throat on fire. I remember my mom demanding an apology from my dad. Who just said well, he's going to have to learn to take pills like that sometime anyway and stormed off. Damn. I haven't thought about that story in 20 plus years. My dad and I once witnessed someone who literally did this for a little three year old girl. This little girl was just playing at the edge of the pool, happily minding her own business when her dad ran up behind her, picked her up and tossed her screaming as far as he could into the deep end of the pool while yelling time to swim honey. At first my dad and I didn't react, cause my dad has done this to me as a game, I learned to swim first, but we started to notice that she was struggling to surface while he dad just watched. My dad nervously asked can she swim? To which the guy just shrugs and says she'll figure it out. I have never seen my dad book it so fast to get at the water as I did that day. He quickly go the kid out of the water and started screaming at the guy about what kind of idiot he was while the girl was just bawling her eyes out. I swear my dad was ready to deck the guy. This was back in the 1990s so we didn't have a cell phone to call the police but we never saw them again after. It was the first time in my life I had seen insane parenting and to this day freaks me out that some people will still do this. My stepmom walked us, me, sister, brother 10 to 12, deep into the woods and left us there to learn survival skills. We thought we were all out on a hike then she distracted us, and ran away. We wandered into camp hours later, we knew how to get back but searched for hours worried that something had happened to her. She was drinking margaritas and smirking. Edit, thank you all for the smiles and awards. My parents told me they were kicking me out at 18 in a move to motivate. Me. I was in college no job and virtually no money. My grandfather had left me about 10k is savings bonds that I asked for but they wouldn't give me. So I made a plan. I went around to 5 different targets and shoplifted about 4 to 5 video games that I took to GameStop to sell, stupid and wrong I know, and at the end of the day I had about $600. I was planning on buying some weed to sell to get some income going till I got on my feet. But when I got back to my house a cop was waiting for me. Parents ended up cashing in my 10k to pay for the lawyer. My brother and I are 7 years apart. When he was 16 and I was 9 he taught me how to box by putting a hockey helmet on me and beating the ever loving shit out of me. I'm reasonably certain I was concussed, and I suffered horrible migraines from that day well into my 20s. Two days after I graduated high school I came home to an empty house, all my stuff in a U-Haul because my mom and stepdad moved without me. I have been financially independent ever since, but a heads up would have been nice. I actually used to be a swim teacher in college teaching private lessons in people's backyards because of parents who had thrown their kids into the pool to sink or swim. It was usually moms calling me for help because they heard from a friend of a friend that I was able to teach their kid and get them to like the water again in about a month or less. One kid, he was seven, I had to sit with him on the pool deck the whole first lesson and bring buckets of water to him. His dad had dunked him multiple times and insisted that his son would just figure it out eventually because that's how he learned. Needless to say he was never home when I was there. The mom had me come while dad was at work. Four weeks later she had me come later in the afternoon so he would come home towards the end of the lesson. His dad saw his son swimming and cried happy tears. He had no idea I had been there three days a week for a month. My favorite student was a 70 year old man who wanted to do a triathlon but never learned to swim because his dad threw him in as a child. It took about 3 months total, a lot of hand holding on the steps and shallow end, 
but he finally achieved his goal and I got to cheer him on at the finish line. I still remember how each of my students clung to my arms and clawed at my neck in their first lessons. I never dunked or forced anyone out of their comfort zone. My lessons had to be customized for each student to keep it fun and relaxing. The trauma in their eyes was haunting though. It stayed with me and I never force anything on my kids that they aren't ready to do. It's about trust, not force. I was at the beach one time and it was hot out I could not walk on the sand without sandals on. I heard a cry and looked up to see a little girl standing barefoot on the sand. Not more than two, screaming for her dad, five feet away, who just told her to stop being such a little pussy. Just about had a rage stroke and ran over to pick her up myself, but he eventually did. I was always a picky eater growing up. One time my mom sat me down with a small bowl of almonds and told me I couldn't get up out of my seat until I finished it. I insisted that I hated them and they were making my mouth itch, she thought I was just being difficult. I just started to swallow the almonds like pills because my mouth was so itchy from chewing on them. A couple years later I saw an allergist and discovered I was allergic to tree nuts. This didn't happen to me but to my older brother, so I had a front row seat to all of it. He was looking to purchase a house for cheap that was in a semi-rural area, and wanted at least some acreage near it. His budget was way smaller than it should have been for the houses he wanted, and was looking at the most dilapidated, terrible houses ever. He found one that was just what he wanted. Multiple rooms, a basement, two acres of woods, and about 15 to 30 minutes away from nearby cities. It was only about $120,000 and he was sold on it. The problems were abundant however and I told him not to do it. Our parents loved this idea. They pushed and encouraged him, looked at it and took pictures, helped fill out loan paperwork, and even started planning all of the restoration projects JT would need. My brother was committed all the way to the point of confirming the loan and moving there immediately. I was mortified. This house was an absolute dump made in the early 1910s and redid once in 1950. It had mold, holes in the roof and walls, old rusted wiring, peeling wallpaper, and crumbling shelves. The only redeemable part was the size of the rooms, which were pretty decent. I begged him to not do it and it finally made him think twice. Finally, he relented and listened to me. He stopped and decided to not do anything. Later, I brought up how bad of an idea that house was and my parents completely agreed. They thought it was garbage but they wanted him to follow through because it would have been a good learning experience. I was floored and asked why they would support this then, and they simply responded that it would teach him to be careful with these kinds of things. They were literally going to let him go into massive debt and struggle so hard in order to teach him to be more careful of opportunities, and they tried to push it and encourage it instead of just sitting down and explaining all of this. TLDR, parents were going to let my brother go into massive debt to buy a shitty old house in order to teach him a lesson on waiting to find a better house deal after encouraging and nearly forcing him to go through with it. This marks the end of the video. If you like my videos, consider subscribing to stay updated with new content. See you until next time.